Right now, we are in the midst of a supernatural war. This is a war between light and darkness. It's a war between good and evil. It's a war between Christ and Antichrist. This supernatural war is a fight to the finish. It's not until you get tired or you get weary. We're not doing this in our strength. We're doing it in God's strength. St. Paul gives this battle cry. Put on the whole armor of God. That is a command. It is not a request. It is for your benefit. You be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. He says you put on the full armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. He says for our struggle it is not against flesh. And Praise the Lord. Um, a very good day to all our friends who are joining us live today from all the five different continents we are so thankful for those of you that have been following us all through these lessons uh, in the School of Deliverance and Spiritual Warfare. And currently on the phase, first phase, we are completing uh, Lesson 13. And we want to continue where we left last week, uh, Power Under the Blood. I want to title this uh, topic today, Victory Through the Blood of Jesus Christ. This is Lesson 13. And we just want to continue where we left last week. Praise God. If you have the word, I just uh, wanted to turn your Bibles and be ready as we go through the scriptures that you may make a reference, take notes, or you want to write down notes. And later, if you want to ask any questions, you are most welcome to send us your questions. And we will be more than glad to I'll reply you based on our experiences dealing with spiritual warfare, uh, you know, uh, in the atmosphere uh, of uh, going to warfare and deliverance. Praise God. Why don't we just pray right now before we continue the lesson. Father, we just want to thank you. We come before you with a heart of gratitude that, Lord, we can come again to another lesson, Lord, to explore, to learn, to dig into your word, to know the revelation of your word regarding spiritual warfare, that how we can engage ourselves effectively, being equipped by a word and knowledge from your throne that Jesus, we will not stand in the place, Father of ignorance. Lord, every time we face the adversary, that we do not know what to do, and then the enemy exploit the situation of our, our ignorance, 
and that God, we could not able to leap and walk to the place of victory. But Jesus, I'm asking you, anoint every mind. I bind and I rebuke every hindrances and anoint our ears, anoint our mind, anoint our uh, Lord, our hearts, that we may hear your word today, that your word will bring great enlightenment and at the same time make us, Father, effective soldiers in the kingdom that we were able to wage effective warfare against the powers of darknesses in this present walk. In Jesus' name, bless your people that have just joined in from all the different part of the world. And God, I pray your hand will be upon them and their children, their family. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We're so glad, as I mentioned to you earlier, that we can come into another exciting topic as we are uh, uh, coming close to the last topic of phase one uh, of the 13th lesson. And we want to talk about uh, the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Before I continue, one of the pastors from India uh, wrote to us and uh, he was uh, telling us, sending us a praise report and telling us, thank you so much for this lesson and some of the lessons and teaching that uh, we have heard so long ago. But we have forgotten the importance of the blood and how the blood can of Jesus Christ is effective and powerful to break every form of attack against a believer. He was telling that uh, my church member was not feeling well due to the COVID. You know, the increase in India, there were so many cases were increased. And he was telling that his own body was not feeling well. And that's when uh, this lesson uh, became a reminder to him. And then he, uh, instead of, 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 of uh, believing the report of the enemy, and he had all the symptoms and pain and was coming down with a fever, he said, I'm going to take authority, bind, and I rebuke this attack on my body because this sickness is not from God, it's from the enemy. And he started rebuking and binding and casting the pain, the symptoms of COVID-19 and whatever that was coming to his body. And lo and below, within few minutes, that thing was broken. And he wrote back and he said uh, that, that now I know that this is not uh, on the natural and this is definitely from the enemy who is trying to uh, bring this attack on my body, my physical body, the sicknesses that I have faced. It is not natural. And I'm glad that to uh, take that lesson and put it into practice and rebuke and go into warfare and rebuke whatever attack that have, could come to my physical body. So people of God, that we want to put uh, these things, just like the, the, the pastor, we want to put these lessons into the use. And let it be remind, uh, reminded to us that the Lord has given us His name. He has given us His word. He has given us uh, the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, the revelation of who He is and what He has given to us, the authority of the believers. So let's walk in the authority that God has called us to. And, um, and all these lessons will, to some of you, that it is could be a new revelation, a new exploring into the truth and the Word of God. But some of you, it could be something that you have listened, something that you have heard so many years ago. And it could be a reminder from God that in the season, the time that we are living, that we should not take it easy with our walk uh, with God and the things that we are facing in the atmosphere, in the adversary, against the adversary, against the attack, against the powers, against uh, the rulers of darkness of this world, against you, your family, your children, uh, the church, your ministry, your finances, your health, whatever it is. So these are the areas we're going to look in today. But before we go into that, I want you to turn to the book of First Peter, First Peter chapter 118, uh, reading verse 19. If you have your word, sorry, um, it is not First Peter 119, it's First Peter 1 chapter 18 and verse 19. Amen. Let's read verse 18 and verse 19. The Bible says verse 18, for as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, 
but with the precious blood of Jesus as of lamb, without blemish and without spot. Amen. Praise God. And we just want to uh, uh, thank all the partners, the friends, the dear friends who have also been praying for us and covering us and our family uh, at this moment, this time we are carrying this teaching. Uh, you know that anyone can go through and attack the enemy, but we are an overcomer. We know that we live above uh, every attack of the enemy, but also we appreciate all the prayers that have been uh, directed to us and our family that keeping us above in our strength, in our virtue, and, and that, uh, you know, no vials, no attack, no dance and throw it against his people can prosper. The Bible says, no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. That is a promise of God. As long as you work walking under the covering of the blood, the enemy cannot touch you, your children, your family, your ministry, and all these areas. So we need to be covered under the blood all the time. And we appreciate each and every one of you for calling our name, praying for us, and standing in the gap for us in, in every moment, every time. Praise God. Last week, uh, we spoke about the fivefold application of the blood of Jesus Christ. And we saw that, number one, I mentioned to you that how the power of the blood, how the effectiveness of the blood is being released or being, uh, uh, being uh, sold, a release upon the life of people through redemption. That's what First Peter chapter 1, verse 18 and 19 says, that it is not uh, with, a, with any corruptible thing, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And I spoke about how to proclaim. Praise God. You can proclaim, you can say, I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus out of the hand of Satan. I no longer live under the influence of the enemy, nor his attacks, nor his power. Go ahead. Began to uh, proclaim that and proclaim over your family and, and, and tell it loud. Say the devil and his cohorts can't cross the bloodline of Jesus. Say that loudly one more time. And say it again. Say the blood is applied in my life, in my family. Call, you can call upon the name of your family members, your spouse, your children. Uh, you, say, you can tell the blood is applied on my property, in my home, in my finances, in my health, in my ministry my job in every area. So these are the areas that we're going to look into. And these are the areas that daily Job, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the patriarch, the forefathers prayed. And they knew that symbolically when they apply the blood of the Lamb in the Old Testament, it's going to be the power that's going to be released in the New Testament through the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise God. So, we saw that that through the redemption, how the blood of Jesus cleanses from every past sin. And I spoke about that it is not a question that when a child of God comes to the place of forgiveness, that it is just, just not a mental belief that the sins has been forgiven, but it is a experience, it's a life-changing experience that break every chains of sin and bondages and the moment you repent and ask God to forgive you, you know the blood has a power to break the bondage of sin and set you free from every curse, every wages of sin that was death and you are set free. You feel that you, uh, you know you become light. You become so light and uh, in the Lord and all the guilt, all the heaviness, all the burden has been rolled away. It is just not in a belief system, but it is an experience because the blood has not lost his power even until today. Praise God. So now we want to look the second element. There are five elements. The first one is redemption and the second one is cleansing. First John Chapter 1 and verse 7 says, But if we walk in the light, and he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us all from every sin. So when we walk under the blood of Jesus Christ, there is a cleansing. There's one thing to be redeemed by the blood, at one time for all the sin that you have done from the time you are born again until the present, but there's also when you fall and you make mistake, and then the blood is ever ready to cleanse you from every present mistakes or weaknesses, whatever that you might have. That, that, that is the first level. 
cleansing you, cleansing you in the past weaknesses and your shortcomings. So when every time you go before God, we should not take the grace of God for granted. That's what the Bible say. But everybody once in a while will make mistake and fall and commit sin. But when you do that, don't stay in the place. That's where the enemy wants you to be. But get up and go to the place of cleansing and ask the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse you. That's the first uh, stage. And second stage is against every unforgiveness. You know that sometimes it is not easy to forgive people that hurt you. And that could be hurts and, and anger and bitterness and uh, also unforgiveness that can creep into our heart. And uh, we can forgive people, but we cannot forget them. But the blood has a power to erase every past Memories, it all depends if you believe it and you will apply the blood upon your life and asking Jesus to erase, to remove every memories, every bad taunting memories. Now the, the enemy cannot bring back your past. You have to cover everything under the blood of Jesus Christ. When the devil reminds you of your past, remind him of the future. And tell him that the blood of Jesus Christ has covered the multitude of sin of your weaknesses. And every time there is issues that are coming against a brother and sister, tell I have forgiven that brother. I have forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, we cannot agree with one another because our natures are different. We've been brought up by uh, different you know, cultures and uh, uh upbringing and our belief and whatever could be different and sometimes we could not see eye to eye to a brother and sister and that could be differences that could be you know a uh, uh, different of opinion and, and sometimes you can cross the line into uh, an argument and debate into even things can get so seriously that we can carry a grudge and we can carry bitterness in our heart but the Bible talk about there's a cleansing. We read First John chapter 1 and verse 7. Well, I cannot see across my brother and sister just on the natural eye. But when I put the blood of Jesus before me, I can see through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what we need to do. There is a power in the blood of Jesus Christ. I cannot come to an agreement with my sometime with my brother and sister. But when I look through the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus, I mean, praise God, has a grace, has a mercy, has a love, has a forgiveness. So when I place the blood before them, God give me the grace to see through things, through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I can able to understand them better. I can able to comprehend the situation better because of the blood of Jesus Christ. So the saying that, it is so important that we need to walk under the blood of Jesus all the time. Secondly, thirdly, justification, Romans 5 and verse 9. Praise God. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from every wrath through him. You and I have been acquainted in the court with guilt of committing a crime. Justification. So according to the crime, we have found verdict. When the verdict came out, we are guilty of, of, of being free. The penalty has been paid by someone. So the justification by right, we need to be uh, tried in the court and the punishment need to be passed. But somebody took our sin. Somebody paid the price. Somebody freed our hands and his name is Jesus Christ. So the blood of Jesus Christ, according to Romans Chapter 5 and verse 9 can able to justify every sin and wickedness because the price has been paid by the high priest, by the Lamb of God, whose name is Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. When you are born again, when you have been planted under the blood of Jesus Christ, when you receive the Lord and walk under the blood of Jesus Christ, Amen. Every, every, every curse of sin, every curse of sickness and disease are broken. The penalty of, uh, of the verdict of every, uh, you know, of every, uh, guilt and crime has been paid by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 There was a sister in Singapore that was, uh, from the church in Singapore, uh, that was in a certain, uh, apostolic church that was carrying uh, she was an unbeliever and um, 
uh, when she came to the Lord, she was an unbeliever. But after some months and years, she found the Lord. She was baptized and she was filled with the Holy Ghost. And uh, and later on, uh, she she married someone and uh, she was carrying a Down syndrome child. The doctor said that she's she is carrying a Down syndrome child. So she was totally was broken hearted. She went before the Lord. The child was only about two months, two and a half months old. But the doctor said that uh, they cannot help uh, in the situation of the child. And uh, when the child be born in eight and a half months, and the child will be Down syndrome. So the mother was so heartbroken and uh, she began to ask God to come through for her. And uh, she said, I could not able to carry a Down syndrome child. Uh, you know, it's such a, a, a cross for me. And she began to cry before the Lord. And she said that I've come to you. I've given, surrendered my life. I, I've, I've been washed by the blood. And she said, I've been baptized. She said, I am your child. And she said, now I want to apply the blood of Jesus upon my unborn child. That's what she said. And for the next few days and few weeks and few months, Every day she pleaded the blood of Jesus upon the unborn child on her womb. And she, she, she cried and she prayed almost eight and a half months. So finally the day came when she's about to deliver the child and she went into the labor. And the, uh, when she gave birth and she was lying in a different room and, and the child was in a different room, the doctors came and uh, she was looking forward and expecting that a child will not be normal because the doctor has been telling that this is a Down syndrome child and there's nothing that can able to help her. And that's why the doctors has been telling every report. But she has been claiming that there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of Jesus. She used to sing that song. She used to proclaim that, uh, you know, the verse. And she claimed that victory of the blood to her unborn child. Amen. And when she gave birth, the doctors brought and she was uh, hoping that everything will be all right. And she prayed. And all of a sudden, the doctors brought the child, handed over the child and said, she said, this is a miracle indeed. We do not know, but we're expecting a Down syndrome child. But when this child has been brought, it's a baby boy. And uh, there is no sickness, no disease, no, no Down syndrome. This child is 100% a perfect child that you have given birth. And they were, they were, uh, you know, were filled with surprise and they were mesmerized to see what has happened. Amen. It is a prayer of a mother that pleaded the blood of Jesus Christ upon the child. Saying, the Lord, I plead your blood in, in, in the daytime, in the noontime, in the evening time. Lord, you have blessed me with a child, but I'm going to plead your blood. Your blood has power. People of God, if you believe, it will come to pass. The blood has power. It has power to break every sickness, every disease. We have been in services, but nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ has brought the great breakthrough among among broken bodies, among crippled lives, among those that are crippled, those that are without hope, the blood of Jesus have brought great hope and deliverance. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Number four, sanctification. Hebrews 13 verse 12. The Bible says, wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate, so it is to say, sanct. The word sanctification came from the word saint. That means to make holy that is impure. When we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, every unholiness has to go. Every impurity has to go. You know what I'm talking about when you are baptized in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. When you are baptized in the water in the name of Jesus Christ. There is a special cleansing force. Amen. Praise God through the blood. Everything broken. Every impurity been broken. Your thoughts are made clean. So don't open the doors. Don't open to curiosity. And uh, sometimes the enemy work through curiosity. Number five. Safety or deliverance. Leviticus 17 verse 11. The Bible says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for your soul. The blood of Jesus has a voice. 
Praise God. I'm here to tell you the blood of Jesus has a voice today. If the blood of Abel had a voice to cry out to God and say, God, avenge me. When Abel was slain by his brother Cain. When you look in the book of Genesis chapter 4 and verse 12. When he said, what hast thou done? God came to Cain and, and told to Cain, what hast thou hast done, Cain? Because the voice of thy brother blood cried unto me from the ground. Here is the blood of Abel begin to cry unto God. I'm an innocent man. I'm an innocent man. I'm an innocent man. If the blood of Abel, a corruptible blood can cry for justice. Can you imagine what a unblemished what a pure, holy, righteous blood of the Lamb, that is Jesus, can do to you and me. That blood has a voice against every powers of darkness. That voice has, that, that blood has a voice against every attack. That blood has a voice against every adversary. That blood has a voice against everything that rises against you and against the blood against uh, against you and your family. But we need to receive that. You can doubt it. You can say, how can the blood of Jesus has power? How can it have power? Even after so many years, I'm here to tell you, we have experienced so many times of the blood of Jesus Christ that have not lost his power. It came through. Even while I'm talking to you today, a brother called me up and asked for prayer. He was going through emotional breakthrough, uh, uh, sorry, emotional uh, breaking. And uh, he was almost at the verge of committing suicide. And as we prayed and plead the blood, the blood brought a victory and broke every bondage over his life. He was set free. Those scales from his mind fell to the ground and he was set free. A pastor... A mighty man of God that had been used in deliverance and healing. And he had a big church. And one time he had a dream. And in this dream, uh, he was traveling in a long distance with a car with his, uh, with his son. So his son was seated next to him. His uh, eldest son. And all of a sudden, the devil appeared at the back seat and the devil told him, I'm going to take your son out. That means I'm going to kill your son. At that moment, the son was struggling with some sickness, some strange sickness had been have taken over his body and he was struggling for too much. Sometimes you know, the doctors has no uh, clue what is going on. They, they told um, uh, the pastor, your son should not have any sickness. He's a healthy boy. We have no uh, you know, uh, idea. We have no answer to this. And they almost give up hope after one and a half months battling. And that's when this pastor had a dream about the devil appearing in the back of the car and telling the pastor, I'm going to take your son out because you've been exposing me. You've been exposing my devices. I've been, you've been exposing the attack, my attack to the people. And all of my faults have been uh, attacked, uh, have been foiled in this city, in this, in this country. When the pastor got up, the pastor spoke to the devil. He said, no, devil, you are not going to take my son out, but I have authority over you. I have authority over your attack. And he began to plead the blood over his son for the next hour, for the next two hours. For the day he has been pleading the blood of Jesus Christ. All of a sudden, amen, that evening, that fever broke, that virus was broken, the disease was broken completely. His son was being set free and he was completely delivered because the, the pastor, the father, believed that there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. And that son walked out, even whatever attack the enemy has planned on his life, because there was a revelation that had been released to that pastor. Even while I'm talking to you, some of you are struggling with your children. Some of you are struggling with the addiction, with the abuse, with those two things that they have been fighting with. But I'm here to tell you, don't take this lightly. Apply the blood of Jesus Christ. Take hold the blood of Jesus Christ for God has given the blood upon you. Uh, for you, the blood of the Jesus has given the blood for you. Amen. Amen. 
many believers, many, many churches don't talk about the power of the pleading of the blood. And that's why they have so many issues, so many problems, so many attacks, so many sickness, so many disease, so many premature death and sicknesses. Because the enemy is taking them out one by one because we are kept in a place of ignorance. People are losing their jobs. Some don't believe in this, but we are going to tell you exactly how to do it, what to plead on, what to plead it against, what to plead the blood against, how frequently you need to do it in order to get God's maximum protection upon you, upon your loved one. In this warfare, in this spiritual warfare, you cannot be dormant, you cannot be on the defensive. But when you go into the warfare, you need to take up the blood. You need to put on the whole armor of God. In the next lesson, I'm going to talk about how to apply the whole armor of God, how to be engaged, how to apply each one of those to be effective warfare. But God wants us to be on the offensive and not on the defensive. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now let's go on. There's so many things I want to talk to you, the things that come into my mind right now, but I need to, amen, praise God, uh, talk on these things uh, that I have uh, written down because some of these are going to help you, equip you, even, even in your ministry. I want to talk to you now how to plead the blood of Jesus for deliverance and protection. I believe that we are truly heading into an end time waters as prophesied in the Bible, learning how to properly plead the blood of Jesus Christ for deliverance and protection is going to be needed in this hour for Christians to help them keep above every, above every waves, everything that the wave. You see, when Jesus Christ, when the disciples were tossing and toiling against the uh, waves, the waves that were contrary to them. And all of a sudden they saw that Jesus came walking on the wave. But he didn't rebuke the wave. He rebuked the wind. There was a cause. There, there was a roots that caused the waves. He spoke and he rebuked, rebuked that, that wind. The cause, the wave. The same wave that had been contrary to the, the disciples, the same wave was the one that carried Jesus Christ to the presence of the disciples. So when you speak to the adversary, when you walk in the authority, you cannot see the forces, but you can see the effect of the wind. You can see the effect that is taking place through the wave that has been blowing into your life. So you need to take authority and speak to the wind. Not speak to the waves. Don't speak to the symptoms. But speak to the wind. The one that causing the wave to rise against you. So when you speak. Amen. The same wave that are coming to your, your life. You are going to ride above the wave. The same wave that caused Jesus to ride upon it. To come to the apostles. You are going to ride upon the wave. To come to your destiny. Your promises to live in a victorious life. Can I get an amen for that? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and say, thank you, Jesus, for this revelation. Lord, I need to speak to my, my wind and not to the waves, Lord. Hallelujah. When the eyes of the disciples were on the waves, the eyes of Jesus was on the wind. He knew there was something that was causing the wind to blow into the waves. That's how the enemy will work to stir up the wind, of the wind against you, against your family, against your children. You cannot see this. It works in a very, very non-transparent way. In a very non-transparent way that you cannot see, but you can discern with the Spirit how the enemy is trying to cause a wave to rise against you, against your family. So in order for you to keep out of the waves, you need to be equipped properly. You need to engage yourself properly in the warfare. Too many Christians are getting robbed, abducted, murdered emotionally, became the victim of the devil because they don't know how to engage themselves effectively, constantly falling into weaknesses, constantly falling into sin, and the blood has no power in their life. And uh, they are falling into physical abuse. 
slanderous, being cheated, being scammed, losing their money, losing their health, losing their peace of mind. Amen. The fear that dominates them, that makes them think that they will going to lose their life. All you have to do is watch the daily news and, and, and listen to those problems and things that the church is going through in this last hour. Amen. Good teaching is good. Good preaching is good. I'm not against it. But we need to engage every good teaching, every good preaching to put it into practice as a good soldier of God to be effective in the moment. We cannot be ignorant when our children are being attacked, when our finances have been attacked, when our family members have been attacked, when we have been attacked emotionally, physically. And we don't know what to do. And we could run for people here and there. We don't know. Unless God releases the spirit of wisdom and discernment. Let us know and speak to us specifically what we are going through. What our children is going through. Amen. I believe the number one reason why so many Christians are coming under such a heavy attack from both demons and evil people in the world. Because they do not have the full protection. The coverage of the blood. And the knowledge how to use them. And the reason they don't have the full protection on them is because they have never been taught how to spiritually defend themselves. And go against, attack the enemy. Not just be on the defensive, but attack and to break every foil of the enemy. Using actual spiritual warfare techniques that is so important. The apostles were not ignorant. They know exactly. That's why Peter said, I don't punch again to the wind. But I know what I punch. I know who I do warfare against. Every every prayer, every warfare, every attack. I mean, it brings blows to the enemy. And, and he's broken. He's crippled. He's been destroyed. The work of the enemy are damaged. What defeats Satan? All of his dark power. The physical death of Jesus on the cross. And what did Jesus do when he died on the on the, on the that day on the cross for all of us, he shed his blood. That's why pleading the blood of Jesus works so well in real life combat. Situation where it really is needed to defeat a tank that is coming against us from the dark side. Amen. You know that when Jesus shed the blood, the blood flow through, flow upon the cross. It dripped upon the ground. The ground broke, the rocks broke, the ground broke, there was earthquake. Read the scriptures. Amen. Praise God. The creation could not hold the power, the bleeding creator, the blood, the pure blood of Jesus Christ. The holy blood of Jesus touched the surface of the creation. It broke forth in cry. It broke forth in turmoil. It broke forth in great, great earthquake. Every You read about the mountains gave up. The rocks began to blow up in pieces. But something else happened. The blood began to drop and drop and drop. This is what I believe. It is not only for the cleansing of every forgiveness, but that blood began to drip down into the surface of hell. Where Satan was having his celebration that he had killed the Messiah. And all of a sudden, here comes the blood. Here comes the blood. When the blood hit the ground of hell, every powers of darkness began to screeching hold. The devil had to stop when he saw the devil flowing, the, the blood of Jesus flow right into his presence to remind him that his powers are broken through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. The devil has no power against the blood. He has no a weapon form against the blood. When the blood came triple, trickling down to into hell, every demon began to scream. Every powers of darkness began to stop. Amen. Their celebration stopped. And instead of celebrating, they went into a hiding place. I believe on that day. And that blood stood as a memorial even today to remind of the devil the blood has not lost its power. As long my people is going to apply the blood, as long they be covered under the blood, there is no weapon that you're going to form in hell that is going to prosper against a child, a man, and a woman of God. That's what the memorial of the blood of Jesus Christ can do. And that blood, I believe, is a memorial 
Today in hell, it is a reminder to the enemy. It is a reminder to the devil. Even today. That's why when you plead the blood and, and, and tell the devil the blood is against you, the devil has to back up. His attack has to back up. His, his, uh, his, 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 uh, whatever he's, he's, he's trying to target against you has to be broken. Every weapon has to be broken because of the blood. Amen, amen, amen. There is protection. There is protection in the blood of Jesus. You can plead the blood of Jesus on a specific things that, that you want protection from, from every kind of adversary. And you could strike them like your body, your house, your car, your finances, your health. The goal is to plead the blood of Jesus on those things in order to protect you before any kind of adversity could come ever, your way even. Don't wait until the attack comes. But in your daily prayer, plead the blood of Jesus Christ. When you see the symptoms of the attacks arising, plead the blood of Jesus Christ. We can plead the blood of Jesus against any attack that may have already come our way. And I believe it only stands to reason that we can also go one step further with the blood of Jesus. And that is to use it for our protection before any kind of attack could actually come our way. In this case, you can declare, you can say, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ on whatever, whatever that is that you want to plead it upon. That you want God's full protection on before any attacks could come your way. Amen. Amen. In the shedding of the Lamb's blood on the Day of Atonement, there was a temporary covering for sin for the Jewish people in the Old Testament. But when Jesus came, in the New Testament and the shedding of His blood, now give all believers complete and total forgiveness of all their sin. Now here is where I feel something else occurred back in the Old Testament that may entitle us to be able to use the blood of Jesus for the divine protection. In the story of the Passover, you know every time they shed the blood, God gave, God had sent His servant Moses to rescue the children of Israel from their captivity of, of the Egyptian. Of every sickness, of every plague. There were so many plagues that came to them. God has stood thrown ten plagues that came to Pharaoh in effort. But every time they went, when the plague came, the only thing that sustained them, protected them, that guarded them, was the blood. Every time they would sacrifice an animal, and it was a memorial unto God that the blood, no place can able to cross the line of the blood. And you cannot touch any Israelites. And uh, every place at the Pharaoh courts, at the house of the, the Pharaoh, the Egyptian, they, it was tormenting them. It was destroying them. But this place could not even touch a life, one single life. Amen. In the house of the Israelites, because the blood covered them, the blood protected them. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. As long the Israelites practices the offering, as long the blood was been shed, as long the blood has been shed, amen, by the shedding of the blood through the animal, there was protection around the camp of the Israel. There was a covering. There's no plagues can come near them. Now Job in the Old Testament offered sacrifice and prayed three times for his family. He prayed for his children. I believe he also prayed for his health. He prayed for his wealth. He was one of the richest men in the Old Testament. He prayed for his flocks. He prayed for his wealth. He prayed, amen, praise God, because the Bible says that, amen, he prayed and prayed until he was fully covered under the blood. The devil could not touch him. The enemy could not touch him that so much so Satan has to, amen, go to the throne of God. In those days he had an access to the throne of God as the Luc Lucifer had an access as a fallen angel. And he went to the throne of God and began to ask permission because that God had put a covering upon Job because of his prayers. Pray for your family. Pray for your children. Pray for whatever that you touch and you do in your life, even the ministry. Pray in the morning. Pray in the afternoon. Pray in the night time. Because there is a covenant in the blood of Jesus Christ. The devil cannot touch Job. He had to come to the presence of God to ask permission from God. Remove your protection. Remove that shield. Remove that covering that you have upon Job. To see whether he'll be faithful to you. 
There is a covering. There is a covering from the day that you have been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. There is a covering. There is a precious, precious covering. And that covering will not be broken until or unless you fall in sin. That's why, you know, people want blessing in their family. They want blessing in their finances. They want blessing in their health. They want God's favor. You know that? And as long the blood is upon you and upon your life, there is protection. The only way the devil can come and break that can steal, can destroy, is when you walk in the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says the devil comes, but not to steal, kill, and destroy. When he voluntarily will make you to fall into sin, and when you don't go back and ask God to forgive you, and cover yourself under the blood, you, there is an open ground, there is open space, there is an opening for the devil to access to the life. So he can launch his attack and break the people through their health, through their finances. I mean, when I have time, I will talk to you about the seven ways the devil will attack. The seven curses, the seven attacks the enemy can access when you open doors. Never open the doors to the enemy. Never give place. That's what the Bible says. Offered sacrifice and prayed three times for his family, his children. And I believe that he, didn't, he prayed for his health in every area. As long prayers went up, the blood and the sacrifice went up before God. There was a protection that would be released. There was a protection that came and covered Job. Job was protected and Satan has to ask special permission. So don't break that covenant with the blood. Don't give place to the devil. The Bible says that don't give place to the enemy. Resist him. How do you resist him? By taking authority and binding him and rebuking him and applying and walking always under the blood. Let the blood is above you. Cover you. Cover your family. How to plead the blood of Jesus for protection. The basic things that you will want to covered under the blood of Jesus for his divine protection. There are seven things. I spoke to you about the seven areas that Jesus shed his blood. There are seven times that the high priest will shed the blood upon the ark of the covenant. And now these are the seven things to cover with the blood of Jesus Christ. Cover yourself under the blood, number one. Number two, cover your home under the blood. Number three, cover your transportation. You're going out and coming in. Number four, cover your finances, your job. Number five, cover your office, the place you work, you do your business. Number six, cover your spouses, your spouse, your children. If you're married, you're single, cover your family, your father's mothers. Number seven, cover your health in the blood of Jesus Christ. These are the seven areas that you need to cover yourself. Under the blood of Jesus. Any one of these could come under the attack of the enemy. So don't wait until the attack has begun. Pleading the blood of Jesus on your car will help prevent you from getting into any type of serious auto accident. We thank God for the angelic host. Friends will tell me that I am one of the terrible, terrible driver on the face of this earth. The way I drive, I mean, maybe I drive like Jehu. Well, you know, very callous. And I've been driving for about 30 over years and I've never even involved in one accident. We have been driving all over in England, in America, in, in, in many, many parts of the world. But God has protected. You know why? Because the blood, as the blood covers you, as God began to engage his angels over you, there is protection and covering to protect you from any accidents, will help you to prevent any type of breaking or theft in your car. Cleaning the blood of Jesus on your finances will help you to protect you from all the scammers and con artists that are out there trying to scam you and steal the blessings of God. That's what the Bible says that unless the devourers will come and steal your blessing, your providence, your hard-earned money. Identity theft has become a major problem in many, many places, but Christians don't have to fall as a victim to this. First thing is pleading your blood upon your transportation. Second, plead your blood upon your finances. Third thing is that plead your blood upon all your transactions, your credit cards, your bank accounts. will stop thief that are trying to track and then steal from you. Amen. And then number four, pleading the blood of Jesus on your house and your 
office building will help protect you against any fires, breaking, burglaries, natural catastrophe, or any type of bad accidents. Pleading the blood on all your children will help them protect them from any possible abduction, serious accident, or life-threatening illnesses. I do not have to tell you how many predators uh, predators are out there looking for the next victim. Literally, a day does not go by when someone is not getting abduct, uh, uh, abducted and robbed or murdered. Pleading the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. That can keep you, that can keep you protected, covered. Amen. All the time. Amen. I want to take a little bit of time and talk about how children can come under attack of the enemy. When we were growing up a family, our children are always, when they were small, uh, they, sometime they will have encounter at night. They could not sleep at night and they would be crying and crying and crying. It could be due to some kind of a pain and some, sometime it could be uh, to, uh, you know, fear and some things that could have come to them. I did not realize at first when I was a young Christian, but later the Lord showed to me that the spirit world, they were attacking them at night and sometimes they could not sleep. And because they could not sleep, we could not get even uh, can get a rest. Small children growing up and many times they could not tell it out. They can uh, tell that they cannot speak and the and only way they can let out is through emotions, crying, weeping, screaming. And when this happens, don't quiet down. Take authority, bind at the attack, rebuke the attack, command the attack to be broken in Jesus' name and plead the blood of Jesus Christ. One time, uh, my youngest daughter, that was uh, probably about uh, a year old, was screaming and screaming in the night and we would go and pray with her for a while and come back and do not know what to do and it happened continuously for a couple of weeks and one time it happened that she cried and cried and she screamed and when I, we ran into the room probably about two in the morning we saw a bat that covered her whole face and she could not even breathe and all of a sudden the vision came out to me and told me that this is what happened in the spirit world, that the enemy that tried to come and choke them at night. We had to take literally physically the bat out and I had to go into a, engage myself in, in warfare, spiritual warfare and binding every forces of the enemy and take the authority and command the spirit to be broken in Jesus name. From that day it was broken and she could go into a peaceful sleep every night. I need to, I, I pleaded the blood and I need to not only plead one time every night when I go into the bedroom over her bed, I used to plead the blood of Jesus Christ. All our children as they were growing up, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ over them and I spoke the word upon their life and I dedicated them to the Lord, to the hand of Jesus Christ. There is power when pleading the blood. There is power in proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ. There is power, amen, authority when you take hold of the word of God and begin to speak it out. Praise God. And final thing I want to tell you about a sister that was returning from a church in a certain nation. And this church, uh, this sister was just a teenager and she was coming back home from a service uh, late night. And normally she will take a bus back, back home. But that night the service was a little bit longer and she missed the 10 o'clock bus and she had to walk back home and she need to, you know, walk in a, a lonely trail back to her home. And a few days before, uh, there was a news that the serial murderer, a rapist that was escaped from the prison and he was in the same state and uh, some of them have, uh, have bumped into him and, uh, you know, he have harmed many of them. So she was coming back home about 10 o'clock walking. It took her almost about one and a half hours to walk back home. And it's normal in Asia in some places, people walk two, three hours to church and come back home. And it was late night. So when the mother uh, heard the news, she was worried. And the daughter did not come back home until late night. So they got together all the neighbors and they went to look for her. And they couldn't find and they began to trace her. By the time they got where she was, she was, in the in the you know in the trail in the small narrow village road about three o'clock in the morning she they found her frozen like a statue she could not move and just right in front of her was a man that was prostrate 
like a, like a frozen, another frozen man, you know, on the ground. And when they got to him, they asked, what happened? What happened? And she, all she did was point to the man and they took the man and found this was the same rapist that is prostrate before this young girl. And uh, they called the police and apprehended this man and took to him to the police station. And finally, the police asked him, they said, you have murdered so many people. You have raped so many people. But that night, what prevented you? What stopped you from touching this girl? He said, when I got close to this girl, this girl was so frightened. I was ready to pounce on this girl, but she was so frightened. But as I got nearer to her, just about three feet away, she lifted up her hands, called the name of Jesus Christ. When she called the name of Jesus, it is like somebody who took a sharp knife and draw the knife into my heart. And I had to fall back and she called and she called the blood of Jesus Christ. When she called the blood of Jesus Christ, I lost all the power, the energy. I became so powerful. Uh, I become powerless. I have no strength to get up. It is like I was pinned down by, uh, by, by something or someone on top of me. And, and when I opened my eyes, there were about 12 or 13 figures. What he was describing was angels, the angelic hosts that have come and surrounded this young girl and protected her that this man could not get to this girl. He saw, I saw a white figure that surrounding this girl I could not touch, but I was pinned down by this figure on top of me. I could not even move my finger to get to this girl. That was powerful, powerful when he witnessed and he began to cry and weep. Praise God in the village, know that she, this girl was a Christian and God had sent the angelic host to protect this girl from the harm on that night. Amen. Praise God. People of God, don't underestimate the power. Amen. Of the blood of Jesus Christ is so powerful. Whatever God has made the covenant in the blood, protection of the blood, the angels have to follow the covenant and follow the promises and protect his people. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. God has given us a weapon of warfare, the blood, the name. Praise God. Let us take it into a warfare binding and releasing the blood upon the life of people in this last day. Praise God, praise God. Amen, the blood is still powerful. The name of Jesus is still, still powerful. Let us walk in the authority of the blood of Jesus Christ. It's called us in the end time, amen, apostolic movement in the last day. Praise God, why don't we lift our hands and pray right now. Maybe some of you have some questions you want to write to us and ask more of these things. Praise God, as much as we know, we want to speak to you. But next week, I want you to tune in again, invite your friends and ask them to come because it's going to be another exciting teaching and, and exploring the word regarding the full armor of God, how to engage yourself, how to put on the whole armor of God into, into going into an effective warfare prayer. Praise God. But before that, why don't we lift our hands and pray right now. Father, we want to thank you for the group of people from all the five different continents that you have brought together, Lord, to hear of the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, even as we listen, let faith will be released upon us. Not only that we will just listen to your word, but God, you are able to exercise and use the blood that you have given to us on the cross for us, my God. My God, upon declaring upon the blood, upon proclaiming the power of blood, let every chain, let every bondages, let every attack of the enemy be broken in Jesus' name. Lord, touch your people in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask of you, Lord, cover your people under the blood of Jesus Christ. Whether they be small, whether they be big, Lord, I'm asking you, cover them under the blood. Release the power of the blood upon your family. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask of you, Father. Lord, we speak of your blood. We speak of your blood. It's a covenant, Lord, under salvation. Father, and the protection for your people in the name of Jesus. We speak to you. We release it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. The Lord bless you, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Stay. Amen. Under the blood of Jesus Christ. Stay in a victorious walk with God. Amen. Keep uh, encouraging the people. Share with those that we have brought the word of God today. And we will see you next week. Amen. Praise God for another wonderful topic about 
Amen. Engaging ourselves in, into a warfare through the armor of God. The Lord bless you. Have a blessed week. And uh, thank you for so many of you that have uh, posted, that have wished my wife a blessed Mother's Day. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Apostolic Channel, every week to your home. God is moving in an unprecedented way in these last days. With everything that is going on currently, God has an appointment for you. Don't miss out on your greatest assignment in this closing hour. Going back to the Apostolic Foundation, back to the Book of Acts. Before the last trumpet sounds, this is our time, the time for believers to rise up. Follow us every week in this network to be equipped and to be empowered for the end time harvest. God is calling His people back to the upper room where it all started. See you again at the Apostolic Gateway page next week. Don't miss out on this great opportunity.